Hi, I'm Tamala Edwards. Welcome back to this special web extra for our special edition of Inside Story. Quickly, if a young woman were to come to you and say, I'm thinking of stepping out to take care of my young children or family, as corporate women, what would you tell her? Would you say do it or don't do it? Can I jump right in ahead? here? Um, life balance is an incredibly important issue and very, very popular. And what I tell women is it's not a matter about balancing life. Life is not balanced. Life balance is an oxymoron, like giant shrimp. It just, <laughs> it, it, it isn't there. Um, you have to prioritize. Right. There are going to be times when work is going to take a back seat to your family. There are going to be times when your family, unfortunately, is going to take a back seat to work. You have to understand when to prioritize, and you have to reach out to other people to fill your role, to help you, to support you while you do that. Otherwise, we as women are not going to be able to do it all. And in fact, well, I would there certainly say, Leslie, successful. one of the trends that I've seen, um, even in my own office, is where I have a young woman who has a beautiful baby, and her husband is taking off a year yeah. uh, to actually stay home. So I think young people are beginning to sort of look at this idea of child rearing and child caring as being a shared responsibility, mm -hmm. which I think will ultimately help a lot as people are making those tough choices. You know, Tim, in catastrophic situations, though, and I agree with the whole idea of balance but my mother passed away in August after a long illness and sometimes I think you do when you make the choices I think family in those situations usually trumps anything else. Right. Right. Andrew Nori, the head of PepsiCo famously said recently at Aspen that she just had to decide she was just not going to be a great mom and her family's okay with that they're proud of her they understand but she said you know what if you were to ask them they'd be honest she was not that great a wife and a mother is it okay to make that decision is there a way to work around that? No, I'm not going to win a blue ribbon. It's defining for yourself what That's it right. is to be a great mother and a great yes, wife. Right. If you're doing all that you can, then you're great at what it is. And it, it all gets into expectations, conversations, and communications. And you have to set those expectations with everyone. And if everyone is on board and say, hey, this is what it is. This is the goal. This is where we're going. Do we have buy-in? Let's do it as a team. I think part of the issue is that we get caught up in this fantasy. We're still in the June Cleaver drama mm -hmm. of saying, oh, this is what a perfect wife mother is. And it's not applicable to most people's lives. Let's focus it in reality and shared goals and go for it. You can't be yeah. everything with the, to everybody. How do you you deal, just can't do it. Well, how do you deal with the imposter syndrome? So many women don't go for it, and even when they do go for it, they don't think they deserve it. Yeah, it's a that book, um, Joyce Roche, right? It's an incredible thing to figure out that you're not by yourself, first right. of all. The other part of it is, um, and, and you know, she has a, in one of the publications, there's a great little test in the front that you can take and say, you know, what's the level, the degree of imposter syndrome that I have um, or don't have? And I think at the end of the day, Tamla, we all have to figure out what our place is in life and what makes us happy. Mm -hmm. After all of this is done, what are you really going to be most proud of? For Indira, she's already decided that. For Erica, I can tell you, it's my hubby of 20 years, right. it's my family, yeah. and, and having a thought by myself when it's all over, it, whatever age I am, and saying, I allowed an imposter syndrome, I allowed the need to prove to others that mm -hmm. I was great, to stand in the way of what was most important would destroy me. So I think for each of us, it's figuring out what that thing is. Let's Absolutely. do the lightning round, your best tip for women out there. We're going to start with you, Leslie. Look after your health. Go get your yearly mammogram, get your colonoscopy, make sure that you as a woman are, is, are uh, that we are all healthy, uh, because if we're not, it doesn't much matter. Anybody else, Beth? Be true to your genuine self and your priorities will rise to the top. Charmaine? Remember how important it is to reach back for others, especially for poor women and working women. They really need professional women to be there for them to provide support and guidance. Renee? Be you. Feel good about who you are. Erica? Keep it all in perspective. Joanna. Uh, don't be afraid to ask for help. Christine. Never compromise your fundamental values. And we'll end with you, Nia. Be confident in who you are, what you do, and your value, what you bring to the table, always. And my little piece of advice, you don't get if you don't ask, so ask. Thank you so much for joining us for this special web extra. This has been a special edition of Insight Story. I'm Tamala Edwards. We're so glad you joined us.